Listen, I'm not a YouTube commentary guy. I don't watch it, I don't make it, I don't like it. Hopefully this is the only time I'll ever have to do one of these. But this channel is an outlet for me, and I've got to talk about this. I'm not going to talk in this video about Bobby Burns saying Shane Dawson makes terrible content and then telling Shane Dawson he's always been a fan of his content in order to land a spot on his channel. I'm not going to talk about how he started making vlogs, about how he stopped, made a video about mental health on YouTube, and then made more vlogs and more videos on mental health on YouTube, regurgitating the same shit. I'm not going to talk about his generous use of the word documentary, or how he's now endorsing the kind of videos he used to hate, mixing up the terms judgmental and critical. I'm not going to talk about any of that, because there are now volumes of videos doing exactly that. I wouldn't be adding anything to it. Instead, I'm going to be talking about his latest project, Nasty Boy. Nasty Boy is Bobby's rap persona, and he just came out with an album called The Nasty Tape. It's seven tracks, and it's bad. Now I'm no music critic, nor am I a rap connoisseur, but from what I've observed of Bobby's rapping, he can mostly rap decently fast, unfortunately, he can't articulate. His words slur together really sloppily even though he's technically saying the words on beat, and as a result it becomes incredibly difficult to decipher anything he's saying. Bobby's under the impression that people want him to post his lyrics so they can interpret the deep messages behind them, but no. Most of us want him to post his lyrics, because we can't figure out what the fuck he's saying. From a production standpoint, I, again, can't point out much, but there are two things I've noticed. One, his beats tend to loop the same phrase over and over, which gets monotonous. You know, I, I can appreciate musical simplicity, but there's a difference between simplicity and monotony, and this music is the latter. This means none of his songs have any interesting structure, none of the songs escalate to anything, it's just a verse, a hook, a verse, a hook, a verse, building to nothing, looping the same shit, and it's over. Half the songs sound like they end halfway through the song. Two, many of his songs are so overstuffed I don't even know what I'm listening to. It reaches a point where it's just noise. There's so many different tracks that don't mesh at all. The worst part about his music, though, is the Nasty Boy voice. He kind of talks like a smoker. I don't know if he's trying to be edgy or cringy or what here. But again, there are two things wrong here. One, it's inconsistent. Half the time he just uses his normal voice, which doesn't really make sense if the whole album is supposed to be from the perspective of this character. And two, it sounds fucking stupid. Which is fine if he's trying to be comedic, but then he featured on a really serious song and he ruined it. Like, this song certainly isn't my favorite genre, it's not a song I'd find myself listening to normally, but for all intents and purposes, it's a decent song. It takes itself seriously, it has a serious message, and out of nowhere he just comes in with his stupid fucking nasty boy voice and just shits on the entire song. Cheerios for lunch, shove them down, camera bite the taste, these are real friends, imaginary was just camera plays. His biggest influence is clearly Filthy Frank, and it's so derivative it's annoying. But he doesn't even take anything good about Filthy Frank, or any of his other influences, and he doesn't make anything original. Everyone copies everyone, sure, but a more talented artist would take his influences and put a unique spin on them, or combine influences in a way that's never been done before. The only thing unique about the Nasty Tape is that it takes a bunch of talented influences and turns them into something bad. In fact, I'd go so far as to call the Nasty Tape the Room of Albums. Completely unironically. The biggest questions I've had are who is this music for? What's the purpose of it? Is it meant to be taken seriously? Is it comedy? Is it, is it satire? If it's satirizing other rap songs, then it's doing a bad job of it. Hell, if it's doing any of those things, it's doing a bad job of it. Satire is supposed to make specific points. It's supposed to criticize specific aspects of something. One doesn't satirize bad rap by just making a bad rap song. That's not how that works. But if it's supposed to be taken seriously, why is so much of it so cringy? There was a development, though, in Bobby's coming out video, in which he made a lot of clarifications regarding Nasty Boy. For instance, he claims that music was always the end goal, and film was just something he did all these years. Video was the way I originally learned to express myself, but music was always the goal. I don't believe that. The first clarification I'm gonna talk about is... It's not a joke to me. The music shit isn't a joke for me. I'm not taking this stuff as a joke. I really hope you guys don't take it as a joke either. If that's the case, then this is just bad music. Here's the thing. I can shit on someone's talent all I want, but I really can't criticize him if he's making something he wants to make. 
It's exactly like Tommy Wiseau. We shit on him, but there's something heartwarming about it at the same time, letting him live in his own little world where he made something good. Except here's the other thing. Nasty Boy is also offensive. And no, I don't mean in the way he intends to be, making Make him want to masturbate. No, I, I mean in a way he didn't even realize. What was generally accepted was that Nasty Boy was the embodiment of all the negativity towards Bobby's later videos. The, the vlogs and the hours of him saying, YouTube exacerbates anxiety in different ways over and over. This was made very clear from the sketches where he's getting rid of Bobby 5.0, which was the one that made all the bad videos. However, another clarification in the coming out video changes the whole concept of Nasty Boy. The whole idea for the Nasty Tape and Nasty in general, a bisexual person in the Deep South was abused and treated horribly for his sexuality and became this ultra-masculine, nasty, aggressive, basically a version of everything I hate. But then at his core, he's still secretly bisexual. When you first hear this, you think, fine, whatever. But then you think about it a little bit, and you just, what? 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 Where does any of this actually show in Nasty Boy? Sure, you can say he was abused in his past. It's better if you actually show that, but we can make inferences. It's weird that you specify in the South, and again, it's better if you show that, but again, whatever. But he's hyper-masculine trying to suppress bisexuality? Literally, in the coming out video, Bobby talks about how when he was suppressing his own bisexuality, he was afraid to wear makeup and do feminine things. You'd think hypermasculinity would be the opposite of these things. So let's see Nasty Boy's hypermasculinity in action. Oh, what's this? Wearing makeup and acting feminine? What? If you want to use sexuality to create a compelling narrative that addresses homophobia and suppression, then that's great. That's not what this is. If you want to shield your bad music from criticism by slapping on a half-assed narrative about sexuality, then that's not so great. But if you're gonna do that, at least show a semblance of this narrative existing in the art you're slapping this interpretation onto. What you did, Bobby, I'm addressing you from the second person now, is you made something that was meant to be one thing. The Nasty Boy narrative was about internet toxicity. And after that, you decided to fabricate a story over that as an afterthought. The interpretation and the evidence do not correlate whatsoever, and now you're forcing this interpretation onto it, and you're exploiting your sexual orientation for the sake of your rap career. Why do I take so much offense to this? You know, aside from the exploitation of sexuality being an objective offense. Well, back when Bobby used to make videos about movies, he never made the best content, he was never amazing, but it was still solid a lot of the time, and it felt more down-to-earth to me. I felt like I was watching a video one of my friends made, or better yet, a video I had made. I guess I... I guess I saw myself in Bobby a little bit, perhaps. Now he's completely oblivious to all the things he's doing that he used to criticize, and had good reason to criticize, and I guess that scares me. You know, maybe I'm worried that I'll become oblivious and start to make terrible art. And it makes me realize I have no idea what I'm doing. Everything I put out could be completely hit or miss. Even this video could get fucking destroyed. I wouldn't know. I haven't posted it yet. I'm filming it right now. People might see this video as the turning point in my short-lived YouTube career, the point in which my quality declined and declined, sending me into the gutter. And this isn't me fishing for compliments. Don't... don't do that. This is just me saying that I have no idea how anything I make will be received. But that's the risk, and at the end of it, all I can really do is make sure that I've said what I want to say. And I think I have. Nasty Boy is the fucking worst. And there we have it, my dive into a YouTube commentator. Hopefully I'll never have to do that again. Uh, nothing has riled me up quite as much as Nasty Boy. Um, if you like this video, uh, it's probably, probably not the best indicator of what my other videos are like, so go watch my other videos, and if you like those, maybe consider subscribing. And if you are subscribed, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Oh, oh. and I have a Patreon now, so... Please give me money. Okay, bye.